today is May 14, 2019. All glory to our Heavenly Father. So, I found a scripture, and the reason why I hadn't caught on to the scripture is because when I first witnessed this scripture, it was the in the NIV. And when I heard peep other people talk about this scripture, they were not reading from the NIV. Now, I don't really believe in the NIV Bible as the Bible people should read. The thing is, it's so much easier on this specific scripture on the NIV. And I know it's Hebrews 10:26. The thing is, and, and I don't know if I don't know if I forgot what either one of them said, if it said gift in there, but I remember reading where it said, once you receive the gift, okay, that there's no more repentance. But that's it, if it says if you willfully sin. Now I'm I'm wondering I'm wondering if this scripture is in the Bible somewhere else because I remember it saying gift, which I know what the gift is. It's the Holy Spirit. I mean, well, no, technically it talks about salvation, so it's talking about Christ. So technically it's talking about Christ, but I still, uh, I mean, I I just don't know what to think because. I know the Holy Spirit is the gift from Christ to us, just like the gift from God to us is Christ. <clears throat> I mean, I'm the one that says it that way. You know, whether anybody wants to admit that it was a gift that, the, I mean, the, some people had the Holy Spirit before Christ coming here, and, the, and it was just a very minute few because the majority of people were not living for God. But in that scripture, when you look at the NIV, it says... If you keep on, and the uh, King James, it says, if you willfully sin. So when people talk about that scripture, I don't ever hear them saying what I'm getting ready to say. They make it sound like that once you've received the Holy Spirit that or, or Christ, that if you go back to willfully sinning, that there is no more chance for salvation, as if you cannot repent and confess and ask God for forgiveness and he'll forgive us but the reason why I like the NIV version is because the NIV version says if you keep on sinning which that's the key, key words is keep on just like willfully sin but I but I don't like the King James version because it makes you feel like that once you've received the gift and you go back to living in sin because willfully sin, living in sin, same thing. That, that there's no more chance for salvation. It's like the doors are closed to salvation. That's why, and, and when people say talk about this scripture, they always use the King James Version, which, like I said, again, I don't like it. Because the King James version, because if you go to the NIV, it says, keep on. I'm telling you, that makes a huge difference. That doesn't mean that if you willfully sin after you've received the Holy Spirit and you've got Christ, because again, you have to have the Holy Spirit before you can have Christ. I'm telling you, Romans 8, 9, no Holy Spirit, not of His. That means you must get the Holy Spirit before you can have Christ. I'm telling you. I'm telling you that's the truth. <coughs> because it says if you don't have the whole if you do have the Holy Spirit, then you have Christ. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't have Christ. See, that tells you you have to have the Holy Spirit first. That's why when you see that scripture when it says repent for the remission of sin, right after that it talks about receiving the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you Repentance is a is a walk with your is a walk. It's your it's it's a part of your walk with Christ is repentance. When you backslide, as a matter of fact, I even saw another scripture right there in the book of Hebrews that uh, I mean backslide is in the Bible. Google the definition of apostate. What words do you see there? What synonym word do you see there that pertains to backslide? Oh, that's right, backslide. 
The synonym for apostate is backslide. A backslide is in the Bible. People, again, I've said it at least a dozen times, Christians in the past, when they, when they, when they went back to living in sin, they used to admit they backslid. Today, they're not willing to do that. Why is that? Now, before I end this video, since I've already said what I was going to say about this scripture, um, I witnessed a person saying that they had never witnessed anybody ever say it was okay to sin. Well, when you preach once saved, that is exactly what you're doing. You're opening up a door to sin. Because if a person does not adhere to if they do not adhere to how bad sin is, then that why care? I mean, why care? Why care if somebody believes and wants saved? Why care? But just for a person out here to say that there is such thing as once saved, that is no different than the pastor leading people astray. Everybody that says that they believe in once saved, they're doing, and, and that there is such thing, and the Bible does preach it, which it does not anywhere in the entire Word of God, because when it talks about eternal security, it talks about having Christ. It's about having Christ. Without Christ, there is no eternal security. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no eternal security. There is no eternal security. That's why it says, if you don't bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you'll be honed down, cast into the lake of fire. It tells you twice in the book of Matthew. It may even say it in Mark or Luke, but I don't think it says it in John because that's a whole different book. Uh, I know living in sin is wickedness, and that is the outcome. That is the reason why... If it, it see where it says that there's no more chance for salvation, what Hebrews talking about? It's talking about when your life is taken. As long as you breathe, you can repent. As long as you breathe, you can repent until your last breath. And I'm hoping if it's your last breath, that it's that they're capable of bringing somebody back alive, as if they're in bad shape. And that they still wake up because there is a living God. There is his only begotten son and there is the Holy Spirit. And everybody has to have the Holy Spirit working in their life. They have to. They have to have the Holy Spirit. It's a must. It's a deal breaker. No Holy Spirit. No salvation. Because you would not have Christ. I mean, it is a deal breaker. And I'm telling you, I'll say it again, the unforgivable sin is not allowing the Holy Spirit to work in one's life. It is not cursing the Holy Spirit, and I would not attempt to curse the Holy Spirit. It is not denying Christ, because what does it say about Christ? It says in the Bible that you can curse Christ and get away with, that, and you can come back, and, and you can get right with God. You can curse God and get right with Him, but you can't, but it's not, it's not cursing the Holy Spirit. It's rejection of the Holy Spirit. It is not allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. If a person perishes without the Holy Spirit, it is over with. It is over with. As a matter of fact, I don't even think that the Bible says that God's word through Christ said that you had to have Christ. Christ said you had to have the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, if you have Christ, then everything in the entire Bible works without Christ. All the wages of sin is death. All these things that it pertains to Christ are non-existent to the person that does not have the Holy Spirit because they would not have Christ. I'm telling you, that is exactly how it works. That is exactly how the Word of God is talking. I'm telling you, that is the truth. So I'm, I'm telling you that scripture that messes a lot of people up, but I like the NIV version better. And I hate to even say that because the NIV leaves so many scriptures out, leads people to believe there's no Trinity. 
well, if God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one, and that's in the King James Version, the King James Version was way before the NIV Bible, way before all these other Bibles. It leads people to believe there is no Trinity. But again, I don't think a person has to proclaim the Trinity to be saved. As a matter of fact, I know you don't have to proclaim the Trinity to be saved. But they are one, and that is a Trinity. That's exactly what it is. So I hope people come to the truth. I hope people do. I hope they people come to the truth.